Today we're going to focus on technology that by all rights should be gathering dust in museums, but instead it's still part of our everyday lives to some degree. They've survived technological revolutions, digital transformations, and still they persist, providing valuable, often unappreciated services to our modern world. So let's get into five pieces of incredible outdated technology that we still use today. Few devices have shown as much tenacity as the seemingly archaic fax machine. A blast from the past that continues to survive in our ultra-modern, hyper-connected world, the fax machine offers a fascinating testament to the surprising longevity of certain technologies. Fax machines themselves a longer history than you might actually think. They were invented all the way back in 1843, when Scottish inventor Alexander Bain created a groundbreaking device capable of reproducing images sent through electrical transmission, the facsimile machine. But don't get carried away, Bain's machine was a very, very crude thing that seemingly didn't even work very well, but still a fax machine it was. It wasn't until the mid-20th century that fax machines as we know them today came to prominence, with them eventually being an indispensable office tool by the 1980s. For their time, they were revolutionary, allowing near instantaneous transmission of documents over considerable distances and thus shrinking the world and fostering a new era of global connectivity. But all good things must come to an end, and right as the fax machine stood at the apex of its glory, the undisputed champion of direct document distribution, it was mercilessly cut down by a new contender, the internet. And well, you don't need me to explain that to you, you're here right now. Yet, despite all but total decimation and obsolescence thanks to the internet, the dinosaur-like fax machine persists, holding on to a niche but vital position. Two questions naturally arise from this. Who is holding on to them? And why on earth are they doing that? One of the staunchest fortresses of fax machine use is the healthcare sector. Despite the advent of new technologies, fax machines continue to be extensively used across hospitals, clinics, and pharmacies to transmit sensitive patient records and prescriptions. A fax document being less vulnerable to hacking is considered safer than an emailed one. This adherence to fax machines fulfills stringent regulations like the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act in the United States, which recognizes faxing as a secure method of conveying patient information. Furthermore, legal and governmental domains known for their slow pace in adopting new technologies also continue to rely heavily on fax machines. This is in part because a fax transmission includes a confirmation page, which serves as a robust legal proof of delivery. These sectors often prefer sticking with tried and true methods until new ones prove to be unequivocally more advantageous, thus giving the fax machine an extended lease of life. On the cultural front, Japan, a country famous for its technology, ironically still holds the fax machine in high regard. The ability to send handwritten notes and original documents is valued immensely, reflecting the society's preference for a personal touch and communication. Despite the increasing presence of modern digital communication alternatives, this cultural perspective allows the fax machine to thrive in Japanese homes and businesses. Further still, many small businesses, despite having access to digital options, still rely on fax machines for their low cost, ease of use, and immediate confirmation of receipt. Also in regions where internet connectivity is unstable or unpredictable, fax machines provide a more reliable and accessible alternative. Despite the fact you probably haven't seen one since 2007, it turns out that fax machines are still everywhere. Apparently. When you think of steam power, what springs to mind? I mean, I hazard a guess, it was probably burly men of the black and white days frantically shoveling coal into one of those great beasts like their lives depended on it. Certainly, this is nothing if not a fair representation of the technology, but like the fax machine before it, steam power is still actually everywhere. But first, a little bit of background. The steam story starts with Thomas Savory, an English military engineer who patented the first crude steam engine all the way back in 1698. This early machine, primarily used for pumping water from mines, was the spark that ignited the future of steam power. The technology came of age in the 18th century, with the improvements brought by Thomas Newcomen and, more famously, James Watt. Watt's enhancements to the Newcomen engine ushered in the Industrial Revolution, fundamentally altering the socio-economic fabric of society. The steam engine, the beating heart of this revolution, powered everything from factories and mills to locomotives and steamships, fostering trade, travel, and urbanization. However, as the 20th century rolled in and internal combustion engines and electricity became dominant, steam power receded into the backdrop, taking on a perception of outdated technology, an outdated relic that now is the preserve of steampunk fiction and rose-tinted period dramas the world over. But, as we already know, this perception couldn't be more wrong. 
The most significant application of steam power today is in the realm of power generation. Whether it's nuclear, coal, natural gas, or geothermal energy, steam power forms the backbone of most electricity production worldwide. These power plants heat water to create steam, which then drives turbines connected to electricity generators. Nuclear power plants in particular utilize steam power to a massive extent. The nuclear fission process generates heat, which converts water into high-pressure steam. This steam spins turbines, which then generate electricity. As of now, nuclear energy accounts for around 10% of the world's electricity, all thanks to our supposedly antiquated friend steam power. Geothermal power plants leverage steam power by tapping into the Earth's natural heat. In regions with geothermal activity, steam produced underground is used to rotate turbines and generate electricity, providing a sustainable and eco-friendly energy source. In industry too, the role of steam is irreplaceable. The food and beverage industry uses steam for a multitude of processes including sterilization, cooking and drying. Its ability to deliver heat at a constant and controlled temperature makes it an invaluable asset. Moreover, the maritime industry, especially cruise ships and some icebreakers, continue to use steam power. These ships use steam turbines due to their reliability, durability, and high power to weight ratio. Also, steam power has also made somewhat of a comeback in automotive applications, I mean, kind of a little bit. In an era when reducing carbon emissions is of paramount importance, steam powered cars are being revisited as a potentially environmentally friendly solution. Companies like Cyclone Power Technologies have developed modern steam engines that burn fuel more cleanly and efficiently than conventional internal combustion engines and supposedly will make a great fit for automobiles one day. But as for whether or not this plays out, we're just going to have to wait and see. Now, let's delve into the digital world and discuss a real titan that many of you in the audience will no doubt remember fondly. The real OG of OSs. That old humble friend that always worked, had no integrated ads, and didn't come with a litany of seemingly moronic interface choices that defined its younger descendants. And of course, always speaking of Windows XP. Short for experience, Windows XP was launched on the 25th of October 2001 at a time when personal computers were becoming ubiquitous in homes and workplaces. By the mid-2000s, Windows XP was the most popular operating system worldwide, boasting over 400 million users. Its user-friendly interface, robust performance, and wide compatibility made it the preferred choice of businesses, government agencies, and individual consumers alike. This wasn't to last, however, and with the evolution of technology and Microsoft releasing newer operating systems like Windows Vista, 7 8 and 10, Windows XP was officially retired in 2014. By this time, it had been many years since most of us had seen a copy of XP in all its glory anyway, and no doubt many of us had long since assumed it dead. So the announcement of its official discontinuation generated little response beyond a murmured, oh, then done that already? But little did we know, Windows XP was still going strong and continues to go strong to this day. The first modern use is perhaps somewhat eye-raisingly military systems. Military systems often prioritize stability, security, and dependability over cutting-edge updates and features. Given that Windows XP is a thoroughly tested and reliable operating system, it therefore still finds use in critical areas within the defense sector. This could include onboard computers for various military vehicles or missile defense systems where the software has been proven to function correctly and reliably. However, it's important to note that the versions of Windows XP used in these systems are typically heavily modified to meet the specific needs of the military including hardened security features to resist cyber attacks, so no need to panic about Judgment Day being brought about by a neglected piece of software. It's all very intentional and very well understood. Beyond this, however, Windows XP is still prevalent in sectors beyond the military. It's not uncommon to find this vintage operating system in ATMs, factories, and even hospitals. These industries often employ specialized equipment that was designed during the XP era and has proven difficult or prohibitively expensive to upgrade. Furthermore, in developing countries, XP remains popular due to its low system requirements and compatibility with older hardware. In addition to this, many hobbyists and retro computing enthusiasts continue to use Windows XP due to its cultural significance and nostalgia it evokes. It's not unusual to find communities online that share tips and tricks for keeping XP machines running smoothly, demonstrating the affectionate following that the OS continues to enjoy. So while it's undeniable that Windows XP is an outdated technology by today's standards, it's equally clear that it has managed to carve out a space for itself in our modern world. Its enduring use in sectors as demanding as the military testifies to the robustness and reliability of this two-decade-old operating system. From running critical defense systems to powering nostalgic gaming rigs, Windows XP's influence continues to permeate corners of our technological landscape. 
Despite the security concerns and logistical challenges associated with maintaining these aging systems, the cost, time, and potential risk of upgrading to newer systems just often outweighs the downsides. Let's stick with computing technology for now and take a look at an iconic symbol from the dawn of personal computing the floppy disk, or as the Zoomers would call it, the save icon. Debuting in the late 20th century, these plastic squares of laughably small memory storage may seem like artifacts from a bygone era, yet surprisingly, their use endures in certain corners of the modern world. The history of the floppy disk began in the 1970s, when IBM was looking for a method to load microcode into their System 370 mainframes. This led to the creation of the 8-inch floppy disk, a bendable or floppy magnetic storage medium that could hold a whopping 80 kilobytes of data. By the 1980s, the floppy disk had shrunk in size but grown in importance. The 5.25-inch and later the 3.5-inch floppies became the primary means of software distribution, data transfer, and storage. Floppy disks were the standard for saving documents, transferring data, and installing software throughout the personal computer revolution. However, with the advent of technologies such as CDs, DVDs, USB flash drives, and of course cloud storage, all of which could hold significantly more data, the floppy disk's reign came to an end in the early 21st century. Yet these little squares of magnetic storage refused to disappear entirely. But where and why? Windows XP made sense, at least. But what possible need could there be for a storage device of such a small size when you can get a Herculean-sized USB stick for no more than the spare change in your pocket? Well, one notable sector that continues to use floppy disks is aviation. The Boeing 747, for instance, uses 3.5-inch floppy disks to load critical navigation databases. And the reason? These systems are incredibly reliable, and the cost and risk associated with updating such critical systems is high. Furthermore, Legacy industrial systems, such as those in manufacturing or power plants, often still use floppy disks. These systems were built to last, and updating them is not always straightforward or economical. Floppy disks are used for tasks like machine updates or transferring diagnostic information. Incredibly, the US nuclear arsenal relied on 8-inch floppy disks for its strategic command and control system until as recently as 2019. The logic was that these older systems, disconnected from the internet, were more secure against cyber threats, which, in full context, actually does make a lot of sense. And it's not just in niche industrial or aviation sectors that floppy disks persist. Musicians and music producers often use them for vintage synthesizers or drum machines that rely on these old storage mediums. There's also apparently a certain charm to the tactile experience of inserting a floppy disk and the unique sound that they produce. Moreover, floppy disks are also used as a learning tool in some computer science classes to teach students about the fundamentals of data storage. Their simple, easily accessible design makes them excellent educational resources. Ultimately, in our high-speed, high-capacity digital world, the humble floppy disk stands as a remarkable vestige of the early days of personal computing. Despite being overshadowed by newer storage technologies, floppy disks have clung to relevance in various sectors, driven by factors such as system reliability, security, economic considerations, and even a sense of nostalgia. For our final piece of gone but not forgotten technology, let us turn to the Humble Pager, a device synonymous with the 1990s and one that we're willing to bet you haven't seen in pushing 20 years. First, background. Back before smartphones dominated our pockets, personal communication was championed, of course, by the mighty Pager, also known as beepers due to the beeping sound that they emitted. How did they? Ever think of that name? Pages were born in the 1950s, initially intended as a tool for communication for doctors in busy hospitals. By the 80s and 90s, they had broken out of the hospital wards and found their way into the mainstream, becoming essentially a tool for business people, emergency services, and even teenagers wanting to stay connected. At their peak in the mid 90s, there were around 61 million pages in use worldwide. However, the advent of the cell phone and subsequently the smartphone led to the pages' decline in popularity among the general public. So, who still uses them today then? The answer to that question takes us right back to where the story began. Hospitals and medical facilities, both of which remain some of the largest users of pages. Despite seeming technologically primitive compared to modern smart devices, pages offer distinct advantages in a healthcare setting, chief among which is the fact that they operate on a different frequency than mobile phones, which means they're less likely to interfere with sensitive medical equipment. Pages are also more reliable in areas where cellular reception is poor or non-existent, such as in basements or within thick-walled buildings that are often found in hospital environments. Unlike smartphones, which can run out of battery within a day, pages have 
a much longer battery life as well, often lasting a week or more, which is crucial in emergency situations. In addition, pages are often more efficient for communication in hospitals. A page to a doctor or a nurse can deliver a concise, immediate message, allowing healthcare professionals to better triage requests based on urgency. Beyond hospitals and paramedics, pages also find usage within the other emergency services. Fire departments and search and rescue teams use pages due to their reliability. Again, particularly OS cellular coverage is unreliable. Furthermore, the pager network often remains functional, even when natural disasters knock out cell towers, providing critical communication capabilities. Even outside of these sectors, pagers are used in restaurants for customers waiting for a table in schools, for teachers on playground duty, and in various other places where quick, reliable communication is required. Ultimately, in a world where we could video call someone on the other side of the globe from a device that fits in our pocket, Bumble Pager might seem hopelessly antiquated. Yet as we have seen, this idea couldn't be further from the truth. Their usage in healthcare, emergency services, and various other sectors is a testament to their reliability, simplicity, and directness, qualities that sometimes outshine even the most advanced smartphones. Their endurance in our fast-paced, technologically advanced world underlines an essential truth. There's often significant value in the seemingly outdated, particularly when it continues to fulfill its purpose quite so effectively.